God is good. God is good. I want to go back over in the first Corinthians chapter 12. I want to talk about the body of Christ some more. Some more. This is, and, it, and I pray God will give us this. But we are the body of Christ by the work of God. Not, not on our own. It's all the work of God. Amen? All the work of God. The, the grace of salvation is the work of God. Being saved is the work of God. Even the initiation of it is the work of God. The beginning is the work of God. Uh, the completion. God Begins it, he works it, and he finishes it. He's the author, and he's the finisher of our faith. God. The arrogancy of the human being is to feel as though I am doing something for God. You're not. I'm not. I hear a lot of people just say, yeah, I want you to do so, I say, you're good. Well, yeah, I do it for the Lord. No, you're doing it for yourself. So your life can be better. I don't serve God for God. I serve God because he's given me enough sense to realize that serving him makes a difference in my life. I don't love God for God. I love God because he put love in my heart to love him. You can take, when it comes to God, you can't take the credit for anything. I, you know, sometimes you wonder why people don't do certain things. And one thing I realize is that a lot of times we don't know who we are. And we don't know what we should be doing. Ushers, you can, you can see that sometimes I get weary when you all stand there. I want you to just take a seat. I didn't know you were But just take your seat and relax yourself. Um, we have to realize that in order to know, to experience myself as the body of Christ, which is very powerful. A couple of things need to happen. I must love, I submit myself to love, let love work through me. I must be submissive to God, and I must humble myself in order to realize myself as a part of the body of Christ. What do you mean realize? It's a benefit. They have peace. They have joy. They experience grace. There's some prayers that I can pray. And I know God answers. Why do I know the answer? Because I say it What is the answer? How do you get that answer? You humble yourself. You submit yourself. And you do your best to walk in the absolute love. Now all of that comes through by the Holy Spirit. The, the, the positioning. We talked about how God positions the different parts in the body. All of that is manifested by the power of the Holy Spirit. The problem is, if I don't realize it, then I can't live it. To be saved is, a, is very beneficial. It's God called me out of the world into his world. I'm seated in heaven. I'm existing in the earth for the glory of God. But I'm benefiting from heaven. All spiritual. I have spiritual power to make a difference in my life and in others' lives. If I'm submitted as the body of Christ. Now, if I'm not submitted, if I get my head all messed up and I'm thinking I'm somebody, I'm trying to be somebody, and I'm upset about something that I can't do, I can't get anything out of the body. I'm not getting the nutrients. In the nutrients of the body of Christ is healing, deliverance, wholeness, peace, joy, love. The nutrients. When I get the nutrients, then I can walk in the power and the authority of God. If I can walk in the power and the authority of God, I can see life totally different. Not just uh, an image, but a living reality. Living reality. It's a horrible thing to begin to serve God 
and God bless you and you go, you leave serving God for what he bless you with. The residue will sustain you for a short period of time. But when the residue lifts, trouble is there. Because the Bible says you cannot serve two masters. So, so don't ever, if you, if you are part of the body and you realize it, don't ever stop gathering. The Bible says, cease not to assemble thyself together with other believers. Why? Because that's where you get your nutrients. That's where the power of God is given to you so that you can see life from a Christian perspective. Not just image, but walk it out. It's a beautiful life. You grow as you know. You grow as you know. As you learn, faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. There's a lot of people that are in the body, but that you can't tell. And it's not the evidence is not that you go to church. The evidence is your lifestyle. Not that you're perfect, but we ought to see some power somewhere in things getting better. God made it better for a lot of folk who served him. They weren't perfect. When you look in the Bible, some of the people that God put in the lineage of Jesus Christ were top-notch hoods, thugs. But God loved them because they were real. You need to be real in the body of Christ. Stop having a religious spirit. And stop trying to put other people in bondage because you don't understand scripture. They shouldn't be doing this. They say, who said that? Because you felt that it looked like they shouldn't be? He said, don't judge nobody. Because you condemn yourself. In other words, he said, you render what I've done for you known and bold. Hmm. Can we get the first Corinthians? Let's go over there, chapter 12. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, my, my real, what I really want to do is 20 and 31, but I need to, I need to do a top and I'm just going to start verse 12. I'm going to go all the way back to verse, I mean verse, I'm, verse 18. We're only going to go back all the way back to verse 1. <laughs> I can hear you so slowly. So slow down. I'm going to slow all the way down. I'm going to start talking just like this. I love my wife. I tell you. I thank God for it. Scripture says to man, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Man don't know what that means. He have no idea. You can't do that. It's not possible. Not the way Christ loved. I know where you know how the Lord has to do it through you. You have to trust him to do everything through you. So I said, God, I don't know how to do that. You have to help me. And now that he's helped me, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. It gives me peace. But it also gives me victory in a lot of areas. Because anything you're in covenant with God to do, if you can honor it, it'll bless you. Amen. Can you go with me into 1 Corinthians 12? I'm going to start at verse 18 and we're going to go down. I'm going to read it. Amen. But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body as it pleased him. Who did it? God. We, we discussed that. But we're going to keep on. He says, and if they and if they were all one member, where would where were the body? Can I, can I, let me elaborate on that just a minute. When you when God has set you in the body as to who you are, why not find out what that is versus getting upset about who you're not? A lot of people are stuck in titles. You, you know, it is what it is. You don't have to be a title to be somebody in the body. The question is, can God use you based on who say you, who He say you are? Can He use you based on who He say you are? Okay. It doesn't matter. Don't get caught up. Don't get stuck. Because it, when the reason being stuck means I am I, I have left God. And I'm, I'm I can't. I didn't move when he moved. I didn't yield when he yielded. I didn't submit. I, see, I do see a lot of fans going, y'all hot. Lord have mercy. D. I felt a little warm, but I thought it was just me. Lord, I thought it was just me, Sister Lisa. I thought, oh, God, am I going through something? I thought it was because of what I drank last night, that water. I, 
No, I'm serious. I did drink me some unusual stuff yesterday. So I drank some snapper. I drank some uh, some baby, the little baby juice stuff. I said, Lord, what have I done? That stuff will wire you up, man, when you don't drink it no more. It had, I was wired up, doc. I said, let me get in the shower and wash this off of me. Oh, man. But that sugar, when it starts coming through your system, it will make you sweat. <clears throat> Did anybody eat too much sugar yesterday? Too much bread? Not the ones who fan. I'm talking about other people. Definitely. <laughs> let me go back to my scriptures. Can't get this done, please. Now, going back to verse 18, I'm going to go all the way down. It says, but, hath, but, but now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it pleased him. And if they were, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one what body? That's that's unity. That's oneness. That's singleness of heart. Verse 21. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. We need each other. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand what that means. It's not to capitalize on a person's wealth. It's to capitalize on who they are spiritually connected to me. No, verse 22, no, much more. Those members of the body which seem to be what? Feeble, they're necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow what? More abundant honor. Get that. And our uncomely part is to have abundant comeliness. In other words, when they're acting crazy, you don't act crazy. For our comely parts have no need. Watch this. But God has tempered the body. See, see, you might have uh, something that somebody else don't have. But you can get on your face and say, God, they need patience. God, they need joy. God, they need peace. You can't tell them they need it because they don't want to hear that. You can't give it to them. Please hear that. The worst thing we can do is walk around as, as believers telling other folks what they, didn't, what they need when we find out we got a little something, something. You got peace, but they don't have peace. They don't need you to tell them they don't have peace. They need you to pray for them that they will have peace. Please hear this, brothers and sisters. It's very important. We can, God can use us greater to help people who need him. That's what it's all about. You can use us greater. See, when you look at people who need God and you are supposed to be a Christian, a follower of Christ, and you shake your head, that means that you're not, you are not really understanding what your purpose is in life. It don't mean you got to go grab their hand and hug them. It means you got to stop, drop, and pray. The word drop means humble myself. Not drop on your knees physically. But drop yourself down and get underneath them and begin to say, God, help them. But for you, God, there I am. You need the body to operate as Christ. See, Jesus did <laughs> Jesus hung out with wine bibbers, crooks, and no good for them. You know, a tax collector was a crook. He called the tax collector to be his disciple. Fisherman was nasty. They stayed in the water for days if they had to. He called those kind of people. So he, see, when you, when you really start talking about, I'm a Christian and God has called me and I'm in the body of Christ, what's holding you up from experiencing the power of God, the presence of God? What's holding you up from, 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 from experiencing the power, the presence, and the provision? Listen to that. It's, let, please, God, let us hear. Please, let us hear. Please, God, touch every ear. This is a critical moment. The body of Christ is needed greater than it's ever been needed. What should I be doing? Bear with me. Bear with me. What should I be doing? I should be yielded to the Holy Spirit. Now, verse 25 is a critical verse because he said that there should be no schisms in the body. No room for the enemy to come in and put division and strife, high-mindedness and arrogance. No schism 
in the body. You know, I like to get down where people are if God let me see them. I don't like to uh, uh, approach people at my level of degree. That ain't going to help them. Sometimes I got to love folk just as they are. There's a prayer that I pray and I say, God, you know, Jesus gave me this and I, I want to I wanna pray this today, our Father, which art in heaven, I, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come in the earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day our daily bread. Then I say, forgive me my trespasses and I forgive those who trespass against me. Then I say, lead me not into the temptation, but deliver me from all evil. See, what I want is thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, now it's, it's, it's we need to understand that the Bible says that God gave Jesus to save mankind. So if we are in Christ, we're not looking to argue and debate. We're looking to save mankind. Why? Because Jesus said, I came to do thy will, O Father. I came to destroy the work of the devil. What is the work of the devil? The work of the devil is planting a seed of disobedience in Eve. Adam given a birth to it, and here we are. Jesus came to destroy that work and plant the seed of obedience and love and grace and mercy in our lives. Amen. So we shouldn't walk around high-minded. We shouldn't walk around Thinking, folks, I've misjudged a lot of people in my life. I have. I've misjudged a lot of people in my life. You know, just thinking that they were one way. Especially if they are a different race of people. I've exemplified some kind of prejudice from time to time. Racism. I was a racist at one time. And sometimes against my own people. So are you. But God has helped me to understand that. He created folk and however it is. I have no right to prejudge them. You know what it does for the Christian? It shuts them down. It limits your life. It hinders you from living. Everywhere you go you suspect of somebody doing something crazy. Acting crazy. Go, don't like you. I don't care who don't like me. I like everybody. I like them. Why do I like them? Because they are important to where I'm trying to get to at that moment. I have no hang-ups like that. I ask God to deliver me from that. I'm asking him to deliver you. See, we need to exemplify the body of Christ. There was a woman who came to Jesus and she had a situation. Her child was sick. And she asked Jesus to help her. He said, you don't belong to the Samaritans. Belong to the children of God. Didn't that sound a little prejudiced? She said, Master. She said, I, he said, I can't give you the food that belongs to the children. She said, oh, eat it. Uh, from, if the, the crumbs from under the table. You know what he said to her? He said, your faith. See, it ain't the, it not, it's not the race of the person. It's the faith of the person. Are we all the body of Christ? It's, of course, it's racism in, 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 in the body, high up in the body. Uh, so we see that we saw that during the elections, right? But that's not my prerogative. I don't want to be a part of that. I want to love folk because in love is victory, and love is freedom. Sometimes I love folk to the extent that I'm misunderstood. I'll reach for folk because I can see them in trouble. But when they push my hand back, I'm not mad at them. Why? Because they just didn't understand. I can't let them stop me from loving folk. Because if I let them stop me from loving folk, I'm no longer operating as the body of Christ. I can't let folk stop me from loving them. And I have to understand my own love that's inside of me, how it works. See, some folk have shut your love down because you don't know how it works. It's bigger than you. It loves greater than your understanding. See, when God releases love in you, it can mess you up. 
you, your folk will think you, you think folk think you crazy because you're so kind to them. Because you do stuff that they, that they don't deserve. So now you're bitter and you're resentful and you're walking around mad and your lips poked out all the time. And somebody say, hey, you sir, you give them the ugly face. Why do you give them the ugly face? Because you're afraid to let love abide. The Bible literally says don't let love be dissembled. Why? Why? Because it belongs to the Holy Spirit. We don't love on our own. Not real love. I never knew love for a woman until God touched me concerning my wife. There's a lot of stuff I did. Put L-O-V on it to get what I want. There it is. But it wasn't true. <laughs> I never knew what it was until I could love you the way I love you. I find it extraordinary. I, I do. I find it. I find it. I, I'm in awe of God. That he can use somebody like me and bring me from what he brought me far from and let me love like this. You ever heard that song, I never knew love before? I do now. I appreciate it. I can love man and woman. See, some folk can only love the opposite sex. And they got to be a sinner. They can't love them in the church. It's got to be somebody out of the church. Because it ain't love, it's still lust. I don't want nobody to know my business. Your business is raggedy then. I don't, I don't fool with them church folks because I don't want nobody to know. That's why you're in trouble. See, see, when you're really in the body of Christ, you're not in trouble. You're in victory. You're in victory. But you have to understand God works mysterious. He don't work according. You have to get in tune to him. Please, Holy Spirit, bless these people to hear this word. You have to get in tune to God. You have to, you have to really get where there's a scripture in the Bible that says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Amen. Amen. It don't mean that you're foolish because you love me. It don't mean that. You know what it means? He's all in you. Holy Spirit will have you loving folk. And you'd be like, I don't even like them. <laughs> I didn't like them before, but they all right now. Because it's, it's not your love. Somebody needs this. See, the body of Christ, he said, I'll give you a great commandment. He said, you can't do the rest, but I'm going to give you something you can do. He said, love. The, the, the Father, your God, with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. Some people are so absent of love. They don't have it in them anymore. They're afraid to let it live. But he said, look, he said, look, this is what I'll do. So I'm talking to the body of Christ. The body of Christ. He said, look, I'll give you something. I'll give you something. He said, I know you couldn't do this other stuff. He said, what I'll tell you to do is you take these things I'm giving you now, and you can hang it on the prophets and the law. What? What you gonna give us? Love the Lord thy God, love thy mind, thy heart, thy soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. So if you don't love yourself, you don't love your neighbor. He didn't tell you not to love yourself. He said, love your neighbor. Sometimes your neighbor sleep with you. You know what's deep is when you love folk that ain't in your house, but you mean the folk in your house. You can't help it. You can't help it. I understand because I was that way. I couldn't help it. I thought that's the way I was supposed to do. Come home and vent. Take my shoes off. What? Who are you talking to? Everybody else didn't cuss you out. Yes, master. Yes, sir. You worship the dollar over God. When God showed me, he said, look, you can love everybody. Let me do it through you. Now I'm glad to see the folk in my own house. I go home, I could the first, Lisa, where you at? I'd be hollering loud. Then she said, I can't hear you. <laughs> she be back in the back, way up, upstairs, way up there. So I call her. <laughs> I'm going to get us one of them uh, Google so I can do the intercom on the phone. I'll put it off. 
But I want to know how she's doing. I wake up in the morning. I say, how do you feel? I check on people I love. You? See, that's what the body of Christ does. We, we're supposed to love one another. We shouldn't have to go out in the world to love one another. And what God don't give you in the body, you don't need. See, the test is, am I going to go looking outside the body because God ain't gave it to me yet? Your biggest prayer brings about your biggest trial. The Bible says, don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. So your biggest test brings about your biggest trial. When you're waiting on God to do something great, you have to wait. You have to wait. Now I'm going to get down to these verses I want to be. Amen. Then we're going to be done. Verse 26. And whether one body suffers all. This is verse 20. I mean 28. 26. 26 in, in, in the first Corinthians chapter 12. And whether one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Don't run from people when they're suffering. Pray for them. Pray for them. You might not be able to, you might not have no money to give them. I, I don't know how many people have ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth, but I love Smith Wigglesworth. He's one of the most anointed men I've ever ever read about. And he uh, he would lay hands on the sick and they would be healed. Smith Wigglesworth wrote that he had been serving God and, and faithful, but sometimes people would give and sometimes they wouldn't. And he suffered financially. Sometimes. But he had made a commitment to buy some land. And, and he uh, he liked to keep his word. He had an elder that he, that he loved. And the elder would pray for him. And they had prayer time set up. And he went over to the elder's house. And he had made a commitment, but he didn't have the money. After he had made a commitment to buy the land, the money had not showed up yet. And, he, and the elder said, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, Smith. He said, I'm doing good. But this is the thing that's bothering me. He said, I made a commitment to buy a piece of land. But I can't buy it. And I got to let the fellow know it. He held it up for me this long. This fellow, where he went, you know, told him, said to him, he said, look, I, uh, I got my money off my stock. And I hadn't put it back in yet. I didn't know what God wanted me to do. He told me to put it under the mattress. He said, how much you need? He told him how much he needed. He said, I got a little more than that, but it is in the check, so I'm going to give it all to you. So you can see, when you're serving God, if, you, if your spirit is right, he got somebody in the body that can help you. I remember when we was buying that house right here, this one next door, this lane. And I was all excited. We were fasting and praying, and I needed the money. And we had one of the members. I had prayed it in the morning, 2 o'clock. I was up tearing with the Lord, begging. Lord, you know tomorrow coming. God put me to sleep and said, you know what you need, just go and sleep with us. I had been all that day because I knew tomorrow was coming. And we didn't have that money. But one of the members stopped by. And they had a paper bag. She said, the Lord woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's about what time he put me to sleep. And told me to put this in my car. And when she brought it in, I, I looked at it. Guess what it was? More than enough. In the body. See, see, God will, God will have folk. They, sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's, you need a friend. I thought about you and called you. How you doing? You're so proud. I'm all right. Lying. If you call me at the right time, I'm going to tell you I'm going through some stuff. Right now. I want you to go ahead on and pray for me right now. Right now. I want you to pray for me right now. Right now. Why? Because that's what you're in the body together for. If somebody is down in a scene and you hear about it, you ain't got to call them up. Get deep. I know you're going through people talking about you. Was that Leroy you was with? <laughs> well, it don't matter because Leroy ain't no good. I wouldn't want you to pray for me for nothing in the world. Don't even call me with that mess. If you hear I'm going through something, if they say, you know, Pastor, they, 
Call him in the store doing a little stealing. <laughs> God forbid. Don't you turn your back on me and talk about, oh, Pastor, you know, he got all that money with his cheap self. Up in there stealing. No, you need to follow in your face and say, Pastor, is a cup talk. <laughs> God, deliver him. God, I don't see him. No, baby, I don't. I haven't been doing no stealing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see him. But I use that simple. Nobody's exempt from your need or from needing you. We all need one another without judgment. That's what the body of Christ is. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. You, you can. I'm always asking God for a miracle. I say, God, bring them out. God, deliver them. God, set them free. God, give them another chance. God, help them. Because I know he can do it. And so I'm so caught up with him. I like to see when he do what he do. I mean, I know I can't do it, but he can do it. So I'm always looking for God to do something amazing because he can do it. You should start looking for God to do amazing in people's lives. Why? Because he can do it. Give me two more minutes. I'm done. Ooh. So he said, if anybody suffer, suffer. If anybody rejoice, rejoice. 20, 27 says, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. You are the body of Christ. Somebody say, I am the body of Christ. And I'm a member in particular. Now, here it is, guys. I want to get to this. I want to get to this. God has set some in the church first apostles. Now, first he gave us all the gifts, the healing, the liberty. apostles. Right? I, I'm not going to, I'm going to take a few minutes to deal with it, but I'm not going to go far with this because it's going to take me a long way. Apostles were firsthand witnesses of Jesus Christ. They were there to carry out or to govern the exact will of Jesus Christ. Apostles. Now, people call people apostles now, but the church is so well established, just like, okay, when Christ established it, he left. He left the earth. And then he, when he put apostles in place, there was the 11 that had been right with him, and then they got another one. But he had also been with him. So the apostle, then they called Paul an apostle because he had eyewitness Christ. Now hear me, I know it's controversial throughout the body of Christ with this. People like walking around calling people all these titles. But you need to be careful what you call the person. Apostle were Jesus' disciples who had walked with him or engaged with him. On the Damascus Road, Paul had an encounter with Jesus, made him an apostle. But look at the work of the apostle. The work of the apostle was to oversee the church and set up the church. In different regions. So now, it's not so many apostles. Now, people, if they tell me they're apostles, guess what I'm going to call them? Apostle. Because a lot of times we're ignorant when it comes to the Bible. We won't study it out. We won't learn. So you call, you tell me you're an apostle. Hey, apostle. Ain't got no problem with your pa. pa. He? AP. I don't. I don't have no problem with anybody. Whatever they tell me they are, I say, okay, hey. Because the Bible said, don't judge another man's service. Now, I can see whether you're apostle because I understand what one is. But I don't have to tell you I see. I can let you walk around and be an apostle as long as you like it, as long as you're happy. It's not important that I tell you what I see. I pray for you and ask God, say, God, there's such an anointing on them. Can you let them get where they're supposed to be? So, my thoughts. The church is established. Apostles were here to establish the church. It's established. The church is not a building. The church is believers. And there was a governing system. Get away from the law. Come under grace. Now, hear this. The law is fulfilled in the believer. When he says we are under grace, it doesn't mean that we are not subject to the law. It's just like if I go down here and I go 100 miles up McDonald's, and Clayton County right up the street. Somebody going to call. I put myself back under that law. But if I don't break that law, 
Now, you see, he said, he said take, I'm taking the law. He said, I came to fulfill it. Now, when you think about the law, people are not under the bondage, but when they break the law, you're subject to the law. But grace, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Grace, what does grace do? Grace says, God, He was so fine last night, I couldn't help myself. I couldn't, God, I needed a little something, something. Forgive me, Lord. When you do the forgive me, Lord, <laughs> then you get the grace. When you put his grace, forgive me. Don't let nobody tell you you're not forgiven. Somebody said, well, you know, Pastor, forgive my license of sin. No, I don't have to give you no license. You were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. You got some sin in you. The Bible said, walk in the spirit. You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. He didn't say the flesh didn't have no lust. Don't get it twisted. When people step and tell you, you know, you just got to live and you just going to be, you just to go into hell. You ain't going to hell if you ask God to forgive you. That's not the grace. That's not the grace message. God forgives you because he said he does. The body of Christ is under grace. What moves my heart away from sin is my love for God. He said he would cleanse me from all unrighteousness. He takes the desire away from me. I have to step over grace to do some of the things that we do. But grace still don't leave. It still abounds. Don't let folk hate you for what you did yesterday because God forgave you. If they don't want to have nothing to do with you, say, holla. And then when they want to be your friend again, say, you didn't like me when I sinned. I don't like you for not liking me. Because you sinned for hating me. You have to be careful because we're the body of Christ. We need one another. We need to tell each other the truth. But if you don't know the truth, you'll put somebody in bondage. I can't believe she walk around here with that boyfriend. She know what the scriptures say. They all living up together and laying together and you don't know how the Holy Spirit convicts them. You're not in her heart or his heart. You don't know. If he convicts you, he convicts them. What do you do? You get on her side and you begin to pray. God, give her strength. Let your will be done. God, I don't understand what you're doing in that. I don't want to look at that in a, in a, in a judgmental way. It could be in, in separate rooms. could be roommates. No. There ain't got no roommate in past. That's what you would do. That don't mean that's what they would do. <laughs> Amen. You gonna judge it on what you gonna do? I know what they're doing. Ain't been in the house one time at night with the lights off. Yeah. Okay, I gotta get this. Okay, secondary, he gave prophets. Now, a prophet is one that. God gives a word, a prophecy, future work of God. Prophecy, future work of God. Now, prophet can exist, but it's by the Holy Spirit. What do I mean by that? God can use anybody to prophesy. He used a donkey to, to prophesy when that boy was trying to go there and curse Israel. Remember? God can use anybody. Listen to me. He can use anybody to prophesy. Same can. God going to use them to prophesy. Only God can use them to prophesy. Stop walking around calling everybody a prophet. That's a prophet right there. Hey, prophet. I have people call me all kinds of stuff. I'll be like, there it is. That's what I got to be for them. When Paul said, I become all things for who? All men. When you're in Rome, you do as the Romans do. Hey, Bishop. <laughs> you doing good, Doc? Try to talk like a bishop when they call me Bishop. You good, Doc? You cool, man? I, I don't know how they talk, so I have to learn. Like I have to hear their language. And keep... <laughs> I'm a pastor. Now, pastor, is, he falls off under that category of teacher. Understand what I do. 
Bishop is an overseer. Again, he didn't use bishop in here, but bishop is an overseer, and he normally or she normally oversees more than one body, more than one church. Well, there's only one body, but one organization of church. That's a bishop. Pastor normally have the congregation that they do, and then, then they have teachers. Uh, he, he mentioned thirdly teachers, and then after miracle workers and gifts of the healing, gifts, gifts of healing. The ministry of helps, government, diversities of tongues. All of us fall in a category. Whatever that category is, if I would do it. Like, like, let, me, let me say this to you real quick. If I call you up and I say, you know, we got a ministry and I think you'll fit well. In. I'm calling you because God told me to. So I don't know what you are. But God wants you in here. So you won't be distracted. He don't want you available to do everything else. If you put God first, I hear people complain about stuff for years. And when I hear them, I remember what God said to them. And they still not doing it. There's a complaint, Pastor, I'm going through this. And it's insane. And I'm like, oh, God is real. See, the body of Christ demands. You didn't put yourself in it. You got something in you that belongs to the body. You need to be in place. So when people keep doing and going through and talk, Pastor, I'm just, I'm just, there it is. God, please help them to see. I don't try to get tired of telling. I, I'll tell, I'll tell folks stuff like you ought to be faithful. You need to be committed. You need to be dedicated. You need to submit yourself. I'll do it. But they can't hear. Me. You show up every now and then. That's my job. When I've done my job, I receive those promises. I, I'm not in control of you. I said, here you come again, like it's a joke. Oh, I'm not a joke. I am burial. And it's a job. I've got an assignment, and I have to take care of you, and I'll tell you what God said for you. Listen, don't be grinning. I guess I've been thinking about it. I don't care about it. If you want to say, shut up, you. Nah, I'm joking. Nah, nah. Yeah, I mean it. Wait for me. I'm about done. I'm about done. I'm about to go home. Y'all ready to go home? <laughs> so you got the, you got the, you got, I went through those real quick, but you got the teachers after that, miracles, and he's talking about gifts, working. God put this in you. People, there are people in here that really can see miracles, miracles come forth. You have been beat down so bad that you don't even know who you are no more. And it's not a public display. It's a private walk with you and God. You, you got beat down so bad, you ain't going to do nothing no more. Oh, I ain't going to do it that all anymore. Because some organizations are so religious, ain't no Jesus. It's all about man. But all this is in the house. It's in here. And I respect it all, no matter who it is. I tell you what God can do. He can use who will submit to him without argument or debate or hindrance. So you got miracles. We still need miracles. Miracles are where God come in the natural and do the supernatural. A miracle is when a person, they tell them they're going to die because their heart is in bad condition and they need a new heart. And the doctors can't give it to them. Miracles are when that woman had the issue of blood. Miracles when that man was on the graveside and had demons in him. The Bible said they came by and they saw him in his sound mind. It's the intervention of God to do things that man cannot do. It's in the church. Miracles is when you get a dope addict that's been doing dope for years and, and all of a sudden because somebody prayed for them or laid hands on them, they got delivered. Miracles is when they're breaking the poverty, breaking the mindset of poverty. Miracles. Then the gifts of healing. 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 I, I, I've seen God do great things. And he's still, and it still works. <laughs> Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, God worked through people to do things. Some things you are under generational curses, and it's a debt to be paid, and it's coming through you by the end. God's got folk that's around you that can help you to break them. You can't break them by yourself because it's where there are two or more gathered together in the name of Jesus. 
healing can go forth. You can have everybody in your family can have something you got. Healing can go forth. Deliverance can go forth. That, that's healing is gifts. He said gifts, that's the Holy Spirit. But he but we have it. And there's somebody in here that's gifted in healing. And also the ministries of help. This is just a great help. I need help. You know, I, I mean, I got people around me that are proficient. I jump in so I know what the heck going on, which I, they don't need me. I want to know what's going on, so it's like, okay, if I got to do this, I need to know what's going on. But I, I got people around me, they don't need me to be there. You know, I, I mentioned Deacon guys yesterday and, and up here working, but he didn't need me to come up here. He told me, I see you about 10. As I'm coming right now, I'm still laying down. I don't know whether it's up through the phone or what. I said, he said, I'll see you about 10. He didn't need me. I could hear it in his voice. But there's, there are different things that my wife can do. She don't need me. If I, if I close my eyes right now, this church would not shut down. It would go forward because of how I talk to my children, I talk to my wife, I show them where everything is. This is what you do if I close my eyes. I meet them. I don't even hesitate. Why? Because they're here to help me. To get it done, you, know, you, 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 you get a lot of stuff that come out from Sister Pepper. She knows that stuff. God gives her a memory on tax. Sometimes it's like she, she can hit it on the mark. Bang, bam, bam. You have meetings, I'll be like, she like, I got it done. Like, oh, oh, oh. There it is. There it is. These people don't need me. I'm just here because I have to oversee it. And some people don't need you either. You got so much pressure. Glory! You got so much pressure on you. Walking around thinking you're holding people up and you can't hold yourself. You need to let them go. Put them in the hands of God and say, God, thank you for giving me you for them. And then live your own life. You can't. There's certain things I can't do. I love my children, but they don't need me. They're doing well by themselves. I, I got a chance to see them recently and I was so glad to see them. But man, they are they are unique people. I mean, you know, Brian has got things going on, then Tiffany has got things going on, and, and Quita is the housewife that she left her career for with her six children. Shaheem, he's doing stuff, and all that she just does whatever she wants to do. Melanie, Melanie is my, my middle, but well, she's not the middle, she's the second to the young. But she's she's all right. You know, I love Melanie. But Melanie would go, go from the left to the right. All of my children got some of me in them. But they don't, they don't need me. They need God. They're functional. I'm done. I'm done. I want to give you just these last couple of scriptures. And you're done. So he asks a question. He says, then he talks about the help of governments, the diversity of tongues. If I had more time, I would elaborate on, on, the, on the government, the diversity of tongues. But then he asked the question in verse 29, are they all apostles? Are they all prophets? Are they all teachers? Are they all? No, they're not. He said, have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? Amen? He said, do this, covet the best gift. And yet, show I unto you a more excellent way. Don't, when he said, no, he said, no, don't. When you read chapter 13, it talks about the best way is to love. Love. Find out what love means and do that and then let God use you. I have some people that's so out of whack. I had one person that was on a, on a, on a ministry and uh, said to another person, said, look, uh, I don't want to do it because my name is not called. I said, well, let me put them over and see how well they do. Because you're arrogant. You have to humble yourself. See, see you shouldn't. You are nobody. I'm nobody. We are part of a body. Jesus is a somebody. We're here to serve him. It's a, it's a blessing to be called a Christian. But it's a blessing to understand what it means. We need each other. We are a body that can make a difference in the world. We can pray for one another. When somebody calls you and they tell you about their children and going through, don't sit up and amen them. Yeah, they come to the church and be so bad and so disrespectful. Don't entertain that. You say, you know what, I'm going I'm to get off the phone. I'm going to call you back. Get on your face and begin to call on the name of say, Jesus. 
I don't know what to pray, but I know that your name change will happen because we are your body. Don't entertain gossip with people. Sometimes it's so easy to get caught up in negativity and gossip. Stop. Start praying. Start being the body of Christ. Start speaking. Some people be want to have a pity party. You don't understand, Pastor. I do understand you don't need to be saying that mess. Words have power. I'm cutting it off. I'm cutting it short. I'm going to stop it. Why? Because you shouldn't be saying, oh, no, God got you. He's going to deliver you. He's going to set you. But, Pastor, I just want to get this. Out. Shut up. Let me finish this. Let me edify you. Let me build you up. Let me work. That's what we should be doing. He said, edify one another. Encourage one another. I pray that God has blessed you with this word today in the name of Jesus. I pray. But let me say this to you, brothers and sisters. I want to be real clear. If Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, then you're not blessed with this word. This is not a ritual. This is real life. It's not a game. It's not deception. It's real life. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, you can't even hear the word. You can barely hear it if he is. The word is spiritually discerned. This is not for show or fashion. This is real. God wants you to do better. He wants you to be insulated in the body of Christ so you can have victory. But you have to get it. You have to get an understanding and then you can walk it out. It can walk itself out through you. But if you haven't ever met him, he's not your Lord and Savior. Then you Lord. It's an opportunity for you to do that. It's an opportunity. What I would do is I would just say, God, please forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. That I repent of my sins. That means to turn to God. I repent of my sins, God. I know I've sinned, but I repent. Jesus Christ, I need you to be my Lord and Savior. If anybody needs this, you can do it right now with me. Please come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Now, Lord. Then believe that he comes in immediately. Because he's a spirit. He can move very quickly. Then, once you realize that he can come in and say this, with my mouth, I confess, Jesus Christ, you are the Lord of my life. Father God, I do believe you raised him from the dead. And you said because of that, I shall be saved. And then take God at his word that you are saved. In the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you one thing. And I'm believing God if you had if you did that, if you did that prayer, that you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Immediately. Immediately. But then expect your life to become different. And let God do the work and not you because you cannot change yourself. Only God can. Only God can. Brothers and sisters, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord, he but in the scriptures, he said, you know, you need to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you need to be baptized. You also need to become a part of where you can go and serve and be a part of the church. If you're here and you're not serving, you need to start serving. You need to find something. Something to do. Because it'll keep you engaged. But if you but if you if you got saved, you still need a church home. I open the doors of this church and just look out when you're big. If you come forward, I'll take your right hand and tell you. But you have to come forward. This is what God will have you to do when you come, when we see you in this Bible for now. Of course, to those of you that are online, you can go on online. You can let us know you want to be baptized online. You can become part, of, become, become part of a ministry online. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. It's all there for you. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to leave you here. You must give your time and offering if you want to. If you believe it. If you believe it. Don't ever get caught up in a ritual. God don't want that. God wants people who give from a cheerful heart. Understanding that as you do it, my word will apply to your life. What does his word say? Give. You shall be given unto you now. Man, you can't stand here. Running over to me. That's what God is. So when you give your time, you bring it to the storehouse. So there'll be meeting with God. He said, open up the windows of heaven. Pour you out a vessel. Won't be enough room to receive. That's what God says. I'm going to pray that God will bless you as you give your time and office. We preach you. Give you wisdom and understanding. Watch your territory. In the name of Jesus. Oh, brother. I thank God for you. This is what I'm believing God this is going to happen. We're going to get in this word and get people. We're going to get a better understanding. And life is going to get better in the Bible. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Tell somebody, hey.